Hey everybody, this is Cody Sparrow from Polypixel, and in this video I'm going to go over the uh, materials, and more specifically, the generalities of like how we approach materials. Um, now you probably, if you've used our packs before, or you've seen our videos before, you probably get a good idea that we use general amounts of standard Unreal stuff. We use compact maps for the metallic roughness and AO. We do a few vertex painting things, um, but generally we're always been we've always been advancing the materials. Um, every pack we go, we we learn a few things, we build on this, uh, certain things because we have certain hurdles in the upcoming pack that we didn't have before. So we're always constantly building and ex exploring. And uh, so I just want to touch base with everybody and give them a quick rundown. If you don't already know, and if you if you do already know how, um, just how we operate so we have a standard material and that is used for i would say 90 percent of the assets in the um in our packs so what we have is in our breakdown is we usually use this dash and that indicates that it's like a master material now we have a few of them and some of them get used once twice whatever it doesn't really matter like like a flag that's it serves the purpose of one time being served for a flag. Anytime we use bark, we use bark. We have the one for rocks, and then we have a standard one and ground and a few other ones. So we try to keep things contained to make it very easy. So we're only dealing with about a dozen actual materials. And like I said, most of them, most of the assets and all these instances that we have in this pack and all our packs are generally using the standard shader right here. Um, so What's cool, what we've done recently, is we've actually cleaned up the standard shader a lot. And by doing that, by how we did that was by ex like closing the exposure of certain features. So we turned off AO grunge onto like Boolean and detail normals and stuff like that. So if you don't need it, you're not using it. And that keeps the um, shader complexity down when you're not using things. So the ground is using a lot of stuff. It's a little darker. The standard shader is not like... But if I were to say go into this garbage can and start turning these things on, you'll start noticing it's getting a little bit more and more uh, darker. So not using any of these, don't use them, and it's a much cheaper material. Um, all these work together perfectly fine. Um, we're always building on top of this. We're going to be improving, and um, so it's. A pretty powerful material, but um, I don't want to say it's like the end all be all and promote it as like this. Everybody should be using it, but it's it's served us well and it's pretty efficient. And yeah, so I'm just gonna quickly go over some of the stuff um, in it right now. So without going into too much detail, AO grunge is essentially um, when you go and bake in light mass, you'll always have this world settings option to bake AO M in occlusion and then this part bake the textures that could be used for this mask this material uses that mask I would probably go into Unreal's documentation to get a better idea of what it does but generally we have it exposed and we can make it turn uh, uh, roughness uh, up or down we could change its opacity and its scale and we mask it with some grunge map so it's not just like a perfect fade it's got some edge detailing and stuff like that um i don't have any light mass in this level so i can't really showcase it but it's there and if you do use light mass that option is available when you use our standard material a detail map it's very common i could probably just use it with stone right now um i wouldn't put stone on this garbage can but let's just crank it up and you get to see, get the rough idea. Yep. So stone, tile it, turn it down. Just helps to give a, a bump. Like I think these are using a, a detail map, but if it doesn't need a detail map, I don't really generally use it. I usually use it for like large surfaces that are broad and don't have high resolution maps. So it helps kind of like lift the load on some of that fine micro details of an object. So I'll turn that off. Uh, rain is kind of cool. Um, rain 
along with snow. Actually, I probably it's probably easier with snow. So what we've done is we've made it so I'm, gonna, I'm very it's bright in there. Turn the shade. So we made a snow material and a rain material. So the rain and the snow they're basically being applied top down projection. That's all. It's not there's nothing too fancy. There's a top down projection. So when you put rain on, the top gets a little wet. And if it's if it's a sideways object, the side gets a little wet. The top's dry. And we have this extra bit of detailing. Oh, I think it's all, I messed it all up here. Um, we have a side bit of detailing. So let's put the snow back on. Um, so it's not just like a full flat on surface. It, we uh, blend it with some mass to give some detailing and stuff like that. Um, and then there's just a few parameters of what you can do, like the opacity. Oh, uh, and also we actually have it exposed with AI masking well, because what we found was um, when we did do top-down projection, you'll get top-down on everything. So like in here, and in here, and on this, and then everything that's basically has the surface that's facing uh, Z up. And so AO masking, what you can do is you can turn it off or on, but it will mask out air areas that are getting ambient occlusion. So if you have, let's say, a, the sidewalk has snow, and you um, have like cover over here, and there's ambient occlusion, you could say turn it off and then all of a sudden snow will blend away. That's pretty much it. It's um it's a nice it's a cute little blend. Um if you're using ambient occlusion. Um tint is pretty standard. We have a um trying to think if I actually have a material that has tint on it. Um I probably have something around here. Car. The car has some tint on it. So let's grab the car. Uh, details vehicle um, this so we use the alpha of the diffuse map to mask in what areas should or shouldn't be exposed to the tint and then that way we can tint specific areas of the object without masking a color over top of the whole entire object and that's pretty much it um, tint easy vertex paint Vertex paint, we didn't go overboard with stuff, but all we do, I'll do some vertex painting on here. Um, where's my modes? Go to vertex painting. I believe it's on the red channel. I paint on all the channels, just to be sure. Um, and all it's really doing is it's going to be taking this grunge map, and it's going to be putting a tint on it, and then there's a few ver uh, adjustments. You can do the sky size and the fall off and stuff like that, and then also the color that it tints and then how much the roughness that it tints on top so if I paint I don't even know if I'm painting anything right now oh I should be doing the garbage can my bad there we go way too strong yikes we can do a flood clean that up there we go so just like a little bit and then like I said you can change the roughness so it's like shinier or rougher we can make it so it's like certain colors. And I'm actually doing this all off screen, so we can make sure it's different colors. Um, scale, so there's like a, a variant scale. It's just a slight a few adjustments to help. Like, so let's say hypothetically you have a couple of benches, you can break it up with a, a, bit, of, a bit of stuff. It's, I wouldn't say it's like a, a perfect painting tool, but it helps bring on a bit of variance on the objects when there's uh, a little too much repetition. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you're not using the material stuff, just turn it all off, leave it alone, and you just have a basic material that just has three inputs for textures. And if you're using more and more, just turn them on and they get exposed and then you can build it as they go. Um, the other cool texture I would say that we have is the ground texture. It's very similar to um, the standard shader, but we focus more on like height maps. So as you can see, like I'm as I'm painting in um, the water, let's say, I'm, on the, I'm not on any verts. Yeah. yeah, it's it pools in the height map a little bit more than it would on there, just as a general surface detailing. So it builds up, and it has like the same kind of parameters where you can expand the puddle size. It's being masked by like a clouds, and you can blend the clouds. 
as much as you want. Yeah, so that's pretty much just a good a generality of like the more common used materials on the pack. The standard shader, the ground shader, that's being used by almost everything. Um, I honestly am having a hard time thinking of what else gets used beside the foliage shader, which you can watch in a different video. And yeah, so if you found that video useful, get some ideas, or you want to have any questions, just um, come to our Discord channel or shoot me an email. I'll try to answer it the best I can. And uh, hopefully you found this helpful and insightful. And uh, thanks for watching, and thank you guys for your support.